Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Well, we are back live here at the SANS Expo Center. We're, of course, in Las Vegas, live at uh, reInvent, AWS. Putting on quite a show here. Day one of three days of coverage you'll be seeing right here on theCUBE. I'm John Walls along with Justin Warren, and uh, we're now joined by a couple of folks from Datamere. Justin Rodatis is the CEO of that company, and Pooja Palin was the senior product manager. And uh, Christian right. and Pooja, thanks for being with us. Good to have you here on theCUBE. Thanks the Cube. for having us. Yeah. Hey, you were just, you were, so you were cubing it just recently up in New York, Christian. Yeah, absolutely. We were, we were seeing you guys in New York, and we had actually, we've done, a, done some work with a couple of customers uh, probably two weeks ago in Palo Alto, I believe. I don't know how we can afford you. I mean, yeah. I mean we're going to have to I mean, look into our budget. Happy to be here again. Okay, <laughs> no, it is great, great. Thanks for taking the time here. I know this is a busy week for you all. Um, first off, let's talk about Datamere uh, in general, just to let the audience at home know, in case they're not familiar, uh, with what you're doing from a core competency standpoint. Let's talk about what you're doing here. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, Data, Datamere was founded eight years ago, and Datamere was, uh, was on the onset of, uh, of the big data wave that, that started in the 2009 and 2010 uh, timeframe. And Datamere was actually the, the first commercial uh, platform that uh, provided a, a tool set to uh, enable uh, our customers to consume enterprise scale uh, Hadoop solutions for the enterprise analytics. So we do everything from ingesting the data into the data lake over uh, preparing the data for uh, consumption by analytics tools throughout the enterprise and we just recently also uh, launched our own uh, visualization capabilities for sophisticated analysis uh, against very large data sets. Uh, we also are capable of uh, integrating uh, machine learning solutions and preparing data for machine learning throughout the organization, and uh, probably the, the biggest push is into the cloud. And we've been in, uh, in, we've been in the cloud for, for a couple of years now, but we see uh, increased momentum from our customers in the marketplace for about 15 months now, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, before we dive a little deeper here, I'm just kind of curious about your work in general. It's kind of chicken and the egg, right? You're trying to come up with new products, to meet customer demand, so are you producing to, to give them what you think they need, or are you producing on what they're telling you that they need? I mean, how does that work as far as trying to keep up with, with I mean, this? I, I can kick, kick this off. So we, it's actually interesting that you ask this, because the, the customers that uh, did interviews with you guys two weeks ago were part of our customer advisory council, right? So we get uh, direct feedback from uh, leading customers that do really uh, sophisticated things with Datamere. They are at the forefront of uh, developing uh, really mind-blowing uh, analytical applications for high-value use cases throughout their, their organization. And they help us understanding where these trends go. And I'll give you an example. So I was uh, recently meeting uh, with the uh, chief data officer of a, of a large global bank in, in London. And they have uh, kicked off 32 Hadoop projects throughout the organization. Um. And what he told me is, um, just these projects will lead to a expansion of the physical footprints of the data centers in, uh, in, in the UK by 30%. So, and, and then he said, okay, we're not in the data center business, we don't want this, we need other, <laughs> other people uh, to take care of this. And, and they, they launched a massive uh, initiative with, with Amazon to bring uh, a big chunk of the enterprise analytics into AWS. God. Uh, it sounds like you're actually really ahead of the curve in many ways, because the explosion in machine learning and AI, it's like that, that data analytics side of things, yeah, we had big data for a little while, but it's really hitting now where people are starting to really show some of the amazing things that you can do with data and analysis. So what are you seeing from these customers? Like, What are some of the things that they're saying, actually, this thing here, this is what we really love about Datamere, and this is something that we can do here that we wouldn't be able to do in any other way? Shall I oh, take yeah. that? Yeah, you oh, yeah. That. So when it comes to heart of the matter, there's like uh, you know three things that Datamere hits on really well. So in terms of our you know user personas, you know we we look at all of our users are analysts and data engineers. So what we provide them is that ease of use, being able to take data from anywhere and be able to you know 
use any multiple analytic capabilities within one tool without having to jump around in all different UIs, right? So it's like ease of use, single interface. The second one that they really like about us is, you know, being able to not have to, you know, whatever, um, <coughs> being able to not have to switch between interfaces to be able to get something done. So if they want to ingest data from different sources, it's one place to go to. If they want to you know, um, you know, access their data, all of it is in, within the single you know, file browser. They want to munch their data, prepare data, analyze data. It's all within the same interface. And they don't have to like use you know, 10 different tools to be able to do that. It's a very seamless workflow. And the same token, the third thing which comes up is that collaboration. It, it enables collaboration across different user groups within the same organization, which means that we are totally enabling the data democratization, which you know, all of the self-service tools are trying to promote here, making you know, the IT's job easier. And that's what Datamere enables. So it's kind of like a win-win situation between our users and the IT. And the third thing that I want to talk about, which is the IT making their lives easier, but at the same time not letting them go of, you know, leaving the leash alone, <laughs> you know, enabling governance. Yeah. And that's a key challenge, and which is where you know Datamere comes into picture to be able to provide enterprise. Uh, ready governance to be able to deploy it across the board in the organization. Yeah, I mean that's something that AWS is certainly led in is, is that a bit, the democratization of access to things so that you can as individual developers or individual users go and make use of some of these cloud resources and seeing here at the show and we've been talking about that today about this is becoming a much more enterprise type issue. So being able to do that, have that self-service but also have some of those enterprise level controls, we're starting to see a lot of focus on that from enterprises who want to use cloud but they really want to make sure that they, they do it properly and they do it securely. So what are some of the things that Datamere is doing that helps customers keep that kind of enterprise level control but without getting in the way of people being able to just use the cloud services to do what they want to do? So could you give us some examples of that maybe? I, mean, I, I let Pucha comment on the specifics on how we deploy and in AWS or other cloud solutions for that matter. But what you see with uh, on-premise data lakes, um, Customers are struggling with it, right? So the stack has become outrageously complicated. Yeah. So they try to stitch all these various solutions together. The open source community, I believe now, supports 27 different technology platforms, right? And then there's, then there's dozens over dozens of commercial tools that they play into that, right? And what they want, they, they actually just want this thing to work, right? They, they, they want to, they want to uh, deploy what they used uh, from their enterprise IT. Uh, scalability, yeah. security, yeah. Uh, seamlessness across the platforms, uh, appropriate service level agreements with the end user communities and, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. So they really struggle to, to make this happen on premise. The cloud, uh, Cloud addresses a, a lot of these issues and takes a lot of that burden away, and it becomes way more, more flexible, scalable, and uh, adjustable to whatever they need, right? And when it comes to the specific uh, deployments and how we do this and how we give them enterprise-grade uh, solutions that make sense for them, Pucha, maybe you can comment on that. Sure, absolutely, and uh, you know, more specific to cloud, I would love to talk about this. So, you know, in the recent times, one of our you know very first financial services customers you know went on cloud, and you know that pretty much brings us over here. You know, being even more excited about it, and trust me, even before elasticity, their number one requirement is security. Yeah. Right? And as part of security, it's not just like one, two, three, Amazon takes care of it, it's sorted, we have security as part of Datamere, it's been deployed before it's sorted. You know, it's not enough. So, you know, when it comes to security, it's security at multiple levels. It's security about data in motion, it's security about data at rest, right? So encryption across the board. And then, uh, you know, specifically, you know, right now while we're at the Amazon conference, you know, we're talking about, you know, enabling key management services uh, you know, being able to have server-side encryption that Amazon enables, you know, being able to support that, and then besides that, there's a lot of other custom requirements, specifically around how do you, you know, because it's more of a hybrid architecture, they do have applications on-prem, right? They do have, you know, like a, you know, deployed cloud infrastructure to do, you know, compute in the cloud as and when needed for any kind of burst workloads. So as part of that, when data moves between, you know, 
within their LAN, to the cloud, you know, within that VPC, you know, that itself, those connectivity has to be secured, and they want to make sure that all of those, you know, user passwords, all of that authentication is also, you know, kind of secure. So we've enabled a bunch of capabilities around that, specifically for customers who are like, you know, super keen on having security, taking care of, you know, rule number one, right? Even before they go. So, live. so financial services, I mean, you mentioned that, both of you are talking about it. That, that's a, a pretty big target market for you, right? I mean, you, you've really made it a point of emphasis. Are, are there concerns, I get it, we, we obviously we understand how treasured that data can be, but do you provide anything different for them? I mean, it's a data, data point, a point, a point, a point is a point, as opposed to another business, you just protect it the same way, or do you have unique processes and procedures and treatments in place that um, give them maybe whatever that additional oomph of comfort is that they need? So that, that's a good question, right? So in, in, in principle, we, we service a couple of industries that are very demanding. So it's financial services, it's telecommunication and media, it's uh, government agencies, uh, insurance companies, and when you, when you look at, at, the, uh, at the complexities of the stack that I've described, it's very challenging to make security, scalability, and these things really happen, right? You cannot inherit uh, security protocols uh, throughout the stack, right? So you stack a data prep, uh, a data prep uh, piece together with a BI accelerator, with a, uh, with an ingest tool, right? Th these things don't make sense. So the big advantage of Datamere is it's an end-to-end -to -end tool, right? We, we, we do everything from, from ingest, uh, data preparation, to uh, enterprise scale analytics and provide this out of the box in a seamless, uh, in a seamless fashion to our customers. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's, it is fascinating how the, how the whole ecosystem has sort of changed in what feels like only a couple of years and, and how much customers are taking some of these, these things and putting them together to create some of the amazing new products and, and new ways of doing things. So, I was like, can you give us a bit of a, an idea of, you were saying earlier that cloud was sort of, it was about two years ago, three years ago. What was it that finally tipped you over and said, you know what, we've got to do this? We're hearing a lot of talk about people wanting hybrid solutions, wanting to be able to do bursting. What, what was it really that drove you from the customer perspective to say, you know what, we have to do this and we have to go into AWS? Did you catch, uh, catch the entire question? They, they just re, uh, just so repeat what, the last what really? What drove it to the cloud? Yeah, what drove no. you to the cloud? What puts yeah, you over the top? I mean, so. This, this, this is a very interesting question because Datamir was always uh, innovating ahead of the curve, right? And this is uh, probably a, a big piece to the story. And if you look back, uh, I think the, the third cloud, cloud, first cloud solutions with Microsoft Azure, so first I, th I think we did our own cloud solution and we moved to Microsoft Azure and this was already maybe two and a half years ago, right? Or even, yeah. even longer. So we were ahead of the curve. Then I would say it was even too early, right? You saw some, uh, some adoptions uh, in Microsoft Azure. So there, there, there's some, some good adoption, but now you see this accelerating, right? And it's, it's related uh, to, to the complexity of the stack, to the, uh, the multiple points of uh, failure of on-premise solutions, to the fact that people want, uh, really they want elasticity. They want flexibility in rolling this out. The primary, uh, interestingly enough, the, uh, the primary motivator is actually not cost, right? Yeah. It's really a breathable solution that allows them to, uh, to, to spin up clusters, to manage certain workloads that come for a compliance report every quarter, right? They need another 50 nodes, spin them up, run them for, for, for a week or two, and spin them down again, right? So it's really the customers are buying, uh, buying elasticity, they're buying elasticity from a, a technology perspective, they're buying uh, elasticity from a commercial perspective. Yeah, we certainly but, but customers really like that great. flexibility. Yeah. Right, and I, I think we are now at a, at a tipping point where, uh, where customers uh, see that they, they can actually do this in a, in a highly secure and, and governed way, so especially our demanding uh, customers, and that it really makes sense from them uh, from, a, from a commercial and elasticity uh, perspective, right? Well, as you were saying, that's what they're buying, but they're buying what you're selling, so congratulations on that. Obviously, it's working. 
Um, so good luck, continued success down the road, and thanks for the time here today. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. Always good to have you on the queue. Uh, it's co <laughs> uh, cocktail time. Thanks right, for having yes, us. Sorry. It is <laughs> five o'clock somewhere here exactly. right now. Back with more live yeah. coverage from re uh, We'll be back here from Las Vegas Live in just a bit.